and welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie here at Broche Ballet. We are a ballet school just for adults. We help adult dancers become the ballet dancer of their dreams at any age. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what to wear to ballet class for men. We're gonna be covering from top to bottom what you should be wearing to feel really comfortable and confident in ballet class. Before we get started, I wanna invite you to come join me next summer, 2022, here in Miami. I'm hosting the first annual International Adult Ballet Festival, a five-day ballet intensive and performance. So if you're curious, check the description box below to learn more and I hope to see you in Miami next summer. I just wanna give a huge shout out and really big thank you to Andy, Dennis, and Bob for taking the time to share all of your tips and hacks for your fellow adult male ballet dancers. Let's get down to business. We're gonna start on the bottom with your ballet slippers. So a ballet slipper is kind of like a sock with elastic sewn on and a leather, and there's also some vegan options on the bottom to really help your feet slide across the floor properly so you can turn and jump and all those things. Women and men start off with the same ballet slippers in our training. Later on in training, women and sometimes men as well will wear point shoes. These are the shoes that are very hard and they enable a dancer to stand all the way up on their toes. But we all start with the same slipper in the beginning of our training. So what a ballet slipper looks like, this is a canvas pair. If you want a super deep dive on ballet slippers, make sure you check out my video on ballet slippers. I have two videos on ballet slippers. Make sure you check those out for a full deep dive on the types of fabrics um, and the different options for ballet slippers. But this is a canvas pair. Canvas is one of the most popular. It's a very breathable option, has a good, sturdy, stiff structure to it. So canvas is a really popular pair. Um, it has elastics, either a crisscross elastic or a single strap elastic. There's a drawstring to help it fit your feet. And there's the pads on the bottom. So one note to watch out for, sometimes your ballet slippers come without the elastics sewn on and you have to sew it yourself. So if sewing isn't your thing, make sure you check the description when you buy your ballet slipper and check if the elastics come pre-sewn or if you're gonna have to sew them on yourself. Some ballet schools might want you to wear socks under your ballet slippers. There's kind of a look that male dancers sometimes have where there's the ballet, white ballet slipper, white ankle socks and then the tights as well. So check to see if they want you to wear socks. If you're wearing athletic socks underneath your ballet slippers, you're gonna want a bigger size so that you have room for your socks within the slippers. Now, most of the men who I spoke with in preparing for this video, most of them don't wear athletic socks under their slippers, however you can. Most of them just wear footed tights, which we'll talk about in a sec, or bare feet under the slippers, although those tights really do help with the sweat between your feet and the shoe because the slippers, when you sweat in them, they can get a little bit, uh, a little bit stinky after a while. Let's move on to the bottoms. So traditionally, men in ballet will wear tights. So the tight fitting material, opaque material to be skin tight to your legs, to show off the musculature of your legs and to show off your technique. Now, if the idea of wearing tights gives you the heebie-jeebies, <gasps> You can most often in an adult ballet class wear something other than tights. You can most often wear uh, jogging leggings, um, a yoga pant, uh, athletic shorts. Most places will take you as you are. Just give them a quick call first and see what they'll allow, especially when you're beginning ballet. You might feel more comfortable in these things. Now, as you become more comfortable with the idea of wearing tights, you, uh, the, the benefits of wearing tights are that they're much more form-fitting so your teacher can see your technique a lot better. This is the reason why ladies wear leotard and tights for training as well because the teacher can see and correct your technique much better. So I do encourage you to try to work up the confidence to wear ballet tights to class. Over time, you'll get more and more comfortable. Also, don't forget, it's a ballet studio. The teacher is so used to seeing people in ballet tights. The other dancers are used to seeing people in ballet tights. Everyone in the ballet world is used to it. While it does feel really self-conscious for you in the beginning, all of us are just so used to it and no one will look at you twice if you're wearing the ballet tights. It is extraordinarily normal to be wearing ballet tights in a ballet studio setting. You're gonna find three types of ends or bottoms of the tight. You're gonna find footed tights, convertible tights, and cutoff tights. Footed tights are kind of like footy pajamas. They go all the way around your feet, completely covering your feet all the way up your legs to your waist. These are really convenient, really comfortable, really easy. You can put them right in your ballet slipper and they'll give you that, that protection and just sweat absorption between your feet and the ballet slipper. Now, convertible tights are also nice. They are footed tights, but they have a hole under your foot so that you can actually pull the footed part off and roll them up so that they look more like cut off leggings. 
These can be really handy if, say, you're wearing your ballet tights to class and you need to go somewhere afterwards. You can roll the, you can take it off of your foot, roll it up, and then have, uh, maybe they'll hide under your jeans or your pants if you're going elsewhere right after ballet class. So that can be handy for that. And then we have the cutoff tights. Now the cutoff tights stop around your calves or your legs. These can be handy if you're gonna be wearing athletic socks over top of them. Sometimes it'll be more comfortable to do the cutoff tight, the athletic socks, so they meet together and not have the full footed tight and the sock, which can be a lot of material within your shoes. Some male dancers also just like the look or the line of the cut off tights and then having bare ankles and then having the bare feet in the shoes as well. It can be a nice line and add some visual interest to your legs. Generally speaking, the tights stay up on their own, but a couple of hacks from the, our fellow adult ballet dancers who I interviewed for this video are to uh, get a waist belt, a little elastic waist belt, and fold the top of the tights over top so that it can really help your tights stay up and your shirt tucked in if you're going for that look. That can really help keep the tights up so that they're not falling down in class. Another common thing that dancers will do is get suspenders to go over the tights, clip them on, and then the tights can stay up really nicely on your waist. Color of tights. Now the darker the color, the less sweat it shows and the less likely it is to be see-through. So most tights are gonna be pretty opaque, um, but you wanna make sure that when you stretch forward that the tights are not see-through on the backside. So darker is more opaque and a little easier to find that, uh, whereas lighter can, cut, can show a lot more, it can show your sweat marks, it can uh, be a little bit more revealing. So depending on where you wanna fit on that scale, darker is a little bit more uh, modest, a little bit more conservative, a little bit more classic, and then the light tights uh, show a little bit more of your muscle tone, your structure, and the shape of your legs. Now the benefit of that is with the lighter colors, especially if you're taking online classes, the lighter colors make it much easier to see your legs and for the teacher to give you tips and corrections for your legs, whereas black kind of hides all the shadows on your legs and kind of hides the contours. So again, it hides it, which is good if you're feeling a little bit shy or uncomfortable with the idea of tights, but it shows it, which is helpful for getting more tips and corrections about your muscle activation. If you love color, don't be afraid to wear color and go a little bit more wild with the color of your tights. Maybe it's a a blue or maybe it's a green. Uh, you can express yourself through the different outfits that you wear. If you really love to wear colors, go for it. Give it a try. Have some fun with it. Um, it's not going to be all eyes on you the way you might think it is. And even if it is, they're just going to be really having fun with your outfit. So much of ballet, so much of the fun of it is kind of what we're all wearing and how we're showcasing ourselves through our outfits and through what we choose to put on our bodies. So don't be afraid to go for that color if you've got your eyes set on it. If black is your thing, that's awesome too. The last most important accessory for the bottom half, regardless of what you're wearing, whether you're wearing tights or sweats or athletic shorts, regardless of any of that is going to be your dance belt. This keeps everything in place while you're jumping and really gives you a nice smooth line and look under your tights. This is a very important accessory and almost all schools are going to require that you're wearing one for your own safety, as well as for the look of your whole outfit. So make sure you check out a dance belt. Don't be intimidated by it. Everybody else is wearing one and it's really important to wear one to keep you safe. For the top, you've got a couple of different options. The most classic option is going to be a form-fitting white t-shirt tucked into your tights. This can be, again, sort of the most revealing option. So depending on how comfortable you are with your shirt showing the contours of your body, you may or may not want to go with this option. This is your most classic option. You can also go with an athletic tee that stays untucked, which can give you a little bit more modesty and coverage around your midsection if you keep it untucked from the tights. Again, just check with the school that you're going to to see what they require require for dress code and what areas they can let you kind of wear what you want. But most places are going to let you wear a, a little looser fitting t-shirt if you don't want that full form fitting look and style. You can wear an athletic tee like from Under Armour or from any athletic store, even the ones that come in a couple, uh, you know, a three pack at the drug store. You can wear any of those. The more moisture wicking, the better. Ballet is an incredible workout, much more than it might seem like just by looking. So moisture wicking is better. Again, darker colors tend to hide more sweat, whereas lighter colors are gonna show your sweat. Believe me, you're gonna get really sweaty. The ladies are gonna be really sweaty. Everyone's gonna be really sweaty. So moisture wicking is best. For sleeves, you can go tank top, you can have a t-shirt or you can have long sleeves. You can kind of see how you feel based on the temperature in the studio. Some studios, 
uh, don't use as much air conditioning as others and so you might want to have uh, either a t-shirt or a tank top to give you more of, more of a cooling effect in your body. But if you do tend to get a little chilly, you might go with a longer sleeve option. The tank top is the most revealing option. It allows the teacher to see your shoulders and your arms. However, it does kind of expose a lot more of your body uh, on the top half. The t-shirt is the most classic look and then the long sleeve, great for when it's a little bit chilly. Speaking of sweat, it's very customary to have a small hand towel with you at the bar to kind of wipe down your face, towel off your arms between the combinations. Also, sometimes in the studio, you'll have to sit on the floor for some stretches and you definitely wanna make sure to be able to have something there that you can wipe up any sweat that you might leave on the floor after having to sit down. And now one final tip for you on what to wear. There is a option for men to wear either a leotard or a unitard. Now the benefits of these are that it's either all one piece from the top to the bottom. Uh, the leotard stops at your, at your hips and then you would wear tights over top of it or the unitard just connects the whole thing from top to bottom. Now these can be really helpful, especially because sometimes the shirt comes untucked or it's a lot of uh, fabric bunching around your waistline. And so it can be helpful to wear a leotard on the top half or just a unitard to connect the whole thing. These are gonna be a lot more form-fitting of garments to wear, so if you're a little self-conscious about that, you might consider saving that for a little bit later when you're feeling more comfortable and confident, but they're actually a really great way to uh, not have to worry about your clothes or always be adjusting during class to just have it all in one piece. There's some really fun styles out there with kind of the, a unitard that has the top half and the bottom half having two different colors or styles, so it kind of looks like you're wearing a shirt in tights. Uh, you don't have to look like you're just all one red blob to wear a unitard. Uh, they have ones that are really, really cool styles for men and uh, d designed for men's taste in ballet wear. So check out the idea of a leotard or a unitard if you feel that you want to have the look of shirt and tights, but you're really struggling with that shirt getting tucked in, kind of moving around during class. All right, Dan Sewers, I hope this was a helpful video to help you figure out what to wear to ballet class and maybe start to build even more confidence to walk into your first ballet studio. If you are a male dancer who has tips for your fellow men, please leave them down in the comments below and help encourage each other to get into the studio and to continue breaking the stereotype and getting more men involved in ballet. We would absolutely love to have you. All right, dancers, until next time, happy dancing, and I hope to see you here in Miami next summer.